uh, your uh, users uh, who will uh, use uh, e-documents and e-document infrastructure uh, to have an understanding why they need to, uh, to use e-documents. So uh, after going through the e-signature building block, e-delivery building block, e-archiving building block, and you build this, uh, in theory, uh, infrastructure in place. <laughs> there is also need to communicate while why you need to build so complex infrastructure. And invoicing was made of one of the uh, uh, crucial parts of uh, basic digital infrastructure in the European Union uh, to facilitate businesses and public bodies to, again, to use e-documents. Uh, and use these other building blocks like e-delivery to exchange e invoices between the counterparties. So idea behind e invoicing that um, it's a mandatory in U European Union for all public uh, bodies uh, to accept e invoices uh, from 19 April of 2019, so more than a year uh, already and this invoice is in mandatory to accept by all public bodies and their statistic behind this uh, you can see on the slide that uh, average person can process uh, 90,000 electronic invoices per year a part of 6,000 and uh, it will cost much less uh, in terms of processing and sending 7 euros plus 5, 15 euros versus 30 cents to process uh, the e-invoice and uh, also time savings uh, so one of their uh, ideal things in our countries in my opinion for the invoices use case that a lot of uh, uh, national wells uh, <laughs> was restri restributed about uh, through their national budget in Ukraine it's about 16 percent of money it's in Ukraine are distributed through their national budget and this why as fast as uh, this money can go through this process it would be better for the economy and, and to people within this country this why processing of e invoices within three days it's a great uh, also a goal uh, to be part of the e procurement process so when you ship your products or services to the public body you will not wait for two weeks, but within three days you can get your money for your products. So to build this infrastructure, uh, European Union used the directive approach versus regulation. So difference between a directive and the regulation, the directive gives a framework that you must implement it in your local uh, legislation and regulation is a direct uh, uh, direct uh, document that there is no need for implementing this document within your local uh, legislation so the core directives uh, uh, is directive on VAT uh, and directive on e invoicing and this directive on e-invoicing within the European Union uh, built a semantic uh, framework uh, to uh, define their standard for the e-invoices and uh, defined uh, uh, mandatory uh, requirement for public bodies to <coughs> accept e-invoices because right now in this digital infrastructure world a lot of um, uh, steps towards digitalization uh, is part of uh, global national and government strategy when government began to use some technology uh, and it becomes uh, becomes uh, day by day usage within the government businesses and uh, citizens began to also to use this uh, s uh, technologies and this is why this is the main idea behind invoices was also to facilitate building of uh, digitalization within the European Union and uh, one more interesting thing about uh, need to build the standard around their invoice because uh, there is a lot of uh, standard um, standards in the field of EDI electronic data interchange 
in medium and big companies to um, facilitate e trade. Uh, but there is uh, lack, whatever, a lack of uh, normative uh, uh, semantic core that uh, needs to be uh, the same within different standards. So when you will send this the same e invoice w using different standards uh, to the public body, there must be ability to map each standard to the uh, the same semantic field like. Uh, company to whom pay, company from whom to play, uh, start date and date of invoice, etc. This why the needs of this mapping was also m made within the standardization process that was launched by uh, uh, applying this directive of on invoicing in European Union. Uh, and uh, uh, right now there is um, a couple of standards uh, within the European Union. The standards you can see on the slide. Their main idea not to define technical syntax of the end invoice, but define the semantic model, semantic data model of the core elements uh, that uh, must be in place uh, for the each invoice and then these core elements can be mapped in different syntaxes within international standards. So uh, idea here is to give um, as much possible technical freedom to the imp for the implementation of the standard but at the same time, when the different technical implementation will be in place, there will be a place for interoperabil interoperability. So uh, public bodies can process any invoice in any technical implementation using the same approaches that was uh, defined in the directive and within their end standards. Uh, also, right now the standardization gives rather good basis for investment in the products because the changes to the standards took years, not months. So that's why um, building the product based on the standards is much uh, stable than working with ad hoc solutions as unfortunately we are using right now in Ukraine. So. Uh, also, the e-invoice uh, based uh, approach was made on this uh, two, two parts of the e-invoice. It's a common section and a legal section. So idea behind uh, this approach is that in some uh, jurisdiction, when there is need of extension of e-invoices to, to put in place, and uh, reflect the local specifics of making business uh, there is a ability to extend standards core model of the invoice with custom fields and then informs uh, these extensions uh, within the legislation and this approach also gives us flexibility to adopt uh, this invoice directive and invoice standards within our countries that uh, in Ukraine we do not have um, such a good implementation of invoices. We have um, different documents uh, that reflect the same semantics of invoice and uh, we are going toward the invoicing process but it's not, uh, not finished yet. And flexibility of the standard <coughs> that give us ability to extend this um, stand, uh, standard, give us um, possibility to use it within uh, local legislation and use the same test bed and building blocks uh, within uh, our countries. So one of their uh, ideas behind the standards uh, e and the core model is to define business terms. So when we will talk about the start date and end date, it will be the same semantic start date and end date. And uh, for example, if we will talk about their product and uh, price for product, taxes for product, it will be the same within the technical standards. And also it defines their relationship between cardinality between the entities within the, the invoice. 
So uh, when we have a semantic model, it's not enough for us to uh, build a working infrastructure because we need a technical implementation of this semantic model uh, within uh, their IT so within their T solutions, and that's why there is um, currently two main standards uh, that uh, are used to implement. Uh, invoice within the European Union. It's a UBL, Unified Business Language, and uh, CII uh, standard, it's a cross-industry invoice uh, syntax, and both of, of these standards are international. Uh, so idea behind their self-building blocks is to give a validation toolkit to the end users who wants to generate the invoice and process this in invoice because it's a machine readable document and it also was a new innovation within the European Union that invoices within the directive it's a not uh, human readable documents like PDFs or Word document it's a uh, machine readable XML documents uh, and using which you can generate a human readable document. But there is no mandatory requirement to send a human readable PDF document to public bodies. It's the requirement only to process machine readable data. And this innovation is interesting for uh, public sector because uh, as a rule within our countries uh, we use <laughs> we used to use human readable documents and this why for example in Ukraine uh, when we defined uh, e-document uh, uh, regulation we put in place the statement that if the document have both machine readable and human readable re representation uh, the human readable representation uh, will be main so if there will be mismatch between machine readable and hum human readable uh, representation uh, human readable will be the main uh, in the european union there is no such an issue between synchronization of two, two representation between because they are using only machine readable approaches and also there is a place for the paper if you are a small business you can still go through the paper process. And uh, uh, if you have um, standards uh, and machine readable representation, there is a, lo a lot of places when you can miss uh, correct syntax. Uh, this is why a self-building block for the invoice from the European Commission gives you ability and products to make this validation. Uh, and also, uh, uh, there is need to understand the difference between the PEPAL project, I maybe some of us heard about it. It's a project that was before the invoicing and e-delivery self building blocks and uh, EADAS regulation, uh, who built their infrastructure for cross-country um, invoice exchange within the European Union, and also right now in Ukraine we are trying to build PEPAL access point to to join this uh, infrastructure within EU uh, but uh, current state of the art approach not to uh, use a PEPAL approach but use e-delivery as a transport for their uh, sending and receiving invoices but also you can build your centralized um, a solution who will uh, be used by all members uh, of all entities, citizens, uh, businesses and government to exchange invoices. It's also possible, but the pre best practice uh, is to use e-delivery and uh, the standard behind the invoices UBL and CII also used in the PEPAL access point to, to represent their uh, invoice uh, data. Uh, so, their roadmap, I also talked about uh, their uh, deadline of t uh, April 2019 that uh, was fit within countries and it's also interesting statistics right now that uh, 25 member states already implemented their uh, uh, directive in their legislation 
and 13 of them uh, requested uh, one year to do this implementation and 23 of the member states already have invoicing uh, solution in place so idea behind it that they use some kind of um, uh, mechanism to fa uh, to exchange invoices and their uh, <laughs> their systems already use the European standard on invoices and one of the syntaxes to process these invoices so this practice is rather widespread within the European Union and uh, there is al already best practices in place that it will be good to be used within our countries to facilitate e-trade and e-procurement uh, within our countries and then with European Union countries. I know that Ukraine already a member of uh, international organization that gives us ability to uh, take part in their European tenders directly from the Ukraine. And uh, one of the success stories was uh, uh, Poland. In Poland they built a uh, PEPL access point, so they didn't use a uh, mm, e-delivery approach to exchange their invoices. They used uh, PEPL as their uh, main infrastructure within which they build the invoicing and e-delivery and right now in Ukraine we're trying to make integration with uh, Poland PEPL access point within a pilot project uh, to build this uh, piloting uh, and exchange of invoicing between two countries and make first cross-border invoicing use case in uh, Ukraine so uh, Right now I would like to go to the demo part of their invoice. So on the right uh, side, do you see well their text, colleagues? Uh, so on the right side there is a sample of their invoice uh, that uh, can be processed by their public bodies within the European Union. Uh, th there is a definition of their supplier company, so we have uh, XML based uh, approach that defines the parties who are part of this invoice. Uh, we have all details of these uh, parties, so the name, the address, the identification, tax schema, etc. Uh, also we have accounting uh, customer and all data about this customer and uh, there is also part defining their uh, credit line uh, credit note line so the product that will be or services that will be uh, uh, represented in invoice and there is also a payable amount that must be paid uh, by their uh, counterparty to the party and for example using this machine readable data there is also ability to uh, automatically process this data within accounting system of the government if and build some kind of risk-oriented systems that capable of uh, doing this. So for example on the left side we have a validation service that uh, was made by the uh, European Union safe building block so here you can upload uh, your uh, invoice, uh, select it type and make a validation and validation result will be success. But when we, for example, will change a total amount that must be paid by the end user, it will be 34 euros and uh, we'll try to make the same validation credit note we will have a failure and we have definition of this error that was made for us so and even line <laughs> we have this issue so this validation service already also have a source code on the github so you can use it within your products to validate generated uh, invoice or invoice that can be um, 
uh, processed by your company or government body so you can use their internal uh, system for the validation of your invoices and also uh, use cre existence of the machine readable representation of invoices gives you ability to simply generate a human readable PDF invoice so right now on the right side uh, I made this uh, a simple tool that took a, a template uh, one second took a template uh, this template have a basic field named total and this field uh, was taken from their machine readable representation of the e invoice and uh, this is a uh, word LibreOffice based document that can be simple transfer into the PDF with uh, amount of the invoice here so to generate this human readable representation it's rather simple and you can use any template that you would like to use to do this but uh, uh, existing of the machine readable data gives more power than simple human readable uh, invoice